Hello guys, welcome to Placebo 282 and today we are going to learn about 3 pole DC motor. Basically many of the people think that we didn't see 3 pole DC motor. But the truth is we always see that. We always see that in every toy. Therefore this is known as toy motor. Generally it present in every toy, moving toy, therefore it is known as toy motor and this is best example for three pole DC motor. Yeah. Before going to discuss the internal parts of it, let us see the outline of the parts which are visible. Cylindrical like structure is there no? That is known as shaft. And this is known as body of motor. The circular thing is known as bearing. This gives the motor mechanical advantage. This helps the shaft to rotate to rotate freely. And next the terminals. These are the terminals for which we connect DC source. When the DC source is applied, the motor starts rotating. Next. For better understanding, I've done a dismantle video from which you can see each and every part of the motor. Thank you. If you see there, I kept them in a line such that you can see every part. First of all, we are going to discuss about body of the motor. Body of the motor. Observing it carefully, we can see two holes and the big hole is the place where front bearing is placed front bearing is nothing but that uh, ring like structure which is present uh, at the first from the left and next two magnets are there and they are placed either side of it like this One is north and another one is south. After seeing this, you can't say that it is bipolar motor or two pole DC motor. Wait for a minute for me to explain you why it is known as three pole DC motor. It is not only north and south, but also can be south and north. But for the time being and standard explanation, I am taking them as north and south. Next, from the bearing, we will get a shaft. I'm drawing the rough sketch of the shaft and the shaft output uh, output in the sense the other end will be connected to the brushes which are in end cap. Next, this is the most important part of the motor. Not only this, there are so many important parts and this is known as armature. For armature, in order to visualize the bearings, I already kept the bearings to the armature and I took a photo. So, I am highlighting with white. This is front bearing. This is back bearing. Let me name them. This is front bearing.
this is back bearing. If you observe, this is copper coil. And now we are going to see the poles which are highlighted with the green color. We have three poles and because of this the motor got the name three pole DC motor. I think now you understood. How the winding is present on the three pole DC motor? Let me explain. These are the poles, three poles. And we have the coil present on it and the winding sense is very important. I am drawing it with a rough sketch and this is commutator segment which is shaded with the red and for one commutator segment two coils are attached see for one commutator segment two coils are attached let us interpret that in this diagram this is a commutator segment and the wire on the commutator segment will not be that much stable. So for the stability purpose, we take another terminal from the commutator segment and we join the wire to that for stability. So the number of terminals will be equal to number of commutator segments. So number of commutator segments will be equal to number of coils. We have three coils, three commutator segments and three terminals. Next coming to the core. See there are many plates like structures which are used to overcome eddy currents. Eddy currents leads to eddy current losses. Okay. But why we are not using a whole metal? Because eddy current loss have the formula Ke Bm square t square f square v square where k is eddy constant bm is maximum flux density t is thickness of lamination f is frequency of magnetic field V is volume of material. So, frequency of magnetic field affects the eddy current losses. But the thing is, we are giving DC current and through the commutator it is converting into AC. Commutator can also useful for AC to DC converse. So we are giving here DC but the frequency is zero and in the core we are getting AC through the commutator. DC frequency is zero whereas AC frequency is not zero understand this is why we get eddy current losses because AC is responsible for the magnetic field for example we have the formula n equals to 120 f by p we have poles we have speed so the frequency will not be equal to zero because we have poles and zeros not poles and speed not equals to zero therefore for AC, frequency is not equal to zero, results in eddy current losses. To overcome that, we use laminations. Laminations are used to overcome eddy current losses. I think you got clear information about that. Next, magnets. These are the magnets I have already shown in the video. These are permanent magnets with the shape like that. The shape is due to 
we have to get a radial magnetic field for the rotor to rotate. Therefore, the shape is such that the rotor can be fixed in that. Circular rotor can be fixed in that. And the end cap. End cap is basically made up of plastic here and a groove which is used to place the back bearing. And we have brushes which are here basically copper. Based upon the rating, the brushes material can be changed such as copper and graphite, carbon, all these things can be used. But the main aim of the end cap is to uh, position the copper brushes in a correct place. That's the only work of it. And this is the overall picture of the parts. First one is uh, front bearing and front bearing and it is body of motor, magnet, armature, end cap and this is terminals and the last one is back bearing. I think you guys understood and in the next video, I am going to explain you the working of 3-pole DC motor. So stay tuned and subscribe to Blaze Creative. Thank you.